Hey everyone, Race Robinson. It's your favorite Florida lender. Hope you're having a great day. You know, everybody's been talking about the new TRID changes that are coming up on August 1st. TRID is a new acronym now in the mortgage or lending world, which is the uh, TILA RESPA Integrated Disclosure. And that goes effect on August 1st. And uh, everybody's been kind of freaking out about it, which I think uh, really people like to do. And I've looked at it, I've went to classes on it, I've watched webinars on it, title companies are putting presentations on it, and really, for the most part, the changes are actually not that bad. So basically, um, what's going on is they're changing the good faith, there was a good faith estimate, and then they changed it to a, spent millions of dollars, put a new three-page good faith estimate that's garbage, and then now they're uh, putting in a new good faith estimate, but now they're not calling it that, they're calling it the loan estimate. Uh, I actually like the form better. I've seen uh, what it's going to look like. I think it is more clear to the buyer. <clears throat> a lot of lenders play the game. They're so easy to manipulate fees and rates. And I think it is a little more clear for the consumer. Uh, break some things down that I, I, I kind of think should be on that form. And then, of course, there's the new closing disclosure, which is um, the form that will take the place of the HUD so that we actually know HUD uh, anymore. And this goes effect August 1st, and that's application date. So if you have a deal closing in August, it may not be affected by it. It's um, new applications after August 1st. So look at all the changes, and I hear everybody kind of saying this is going to happen, that's going to happen. And really, the, the only the big change is obviously that it's going to that the uh, consumer has to get the closing disclosure three days before closing. And uh, we're now HUDs can change at the last minute, and that. Um, things do change at the last minute sometimes and so this is going to push closings back and really in the 15 years that I've been doing this it's tougher than ever as far as compliance and all the redisclosures and all the issues that come up in underwriting that we're dealing with so pushing the closing time back a little bit is probably not the end of the world uh, it will create some issues on the back end where there's changes and then you know we're now we could fix them and close one day later now we have to wait the three days now, when I read the guidelines, it actually only says the three changes that require the three-day uh, waiting period is APR changes, product changes, um, and uh, if you had a prepayment penalty. But lenders tend to err on the side of caution, so I wouldn't be surprised that even if uh, the uh, CFPB isn't requiring that wait period, that most lenders will make everybody wait maybe for any change. So, uh, so you are going to have to be vil uh, diligent on the back end where... I think it is going to push closing times out. And really, like I said, the, the agents that I see trying to close in three and four weeks these days uh, really create a lot of stress on the buyer. And I mean, they, obviously they can close that fast, but so many things can go wrong and then everybody's upset. So I think more and more time is needed to really get the closing and make sure there's no big issues. So I thought it'd be cool to give you a few questions that you should ask uh, the lender um, that you'd ask somebody like me. So... Uh, on the front side, when, as far as the loan estimate goes, if the listing agent, just ask if the borrower has uh, given their intent to proceed. That way you know they've selected their lender. And for the buyer agent, um, you know, confirm that the borrower's also uh, did the intent to proceed uh, and that the, the lenders received the credit card information because they cannot accept the credit card information until that intent has been given. That way you'll know where it's at as far as getting the appraisal order. And then on the closing disclosure, you know, of course, make sure you have all your fees um, to the lender or title company so that there's no confusion on if there's any I don't know, transaction fees or whatever they're called um, or, and commission so everybody's clear and that's really the same for the listing agent and the buying agent. Okay, so that is another change which is the lender's really responsible for the closing disclosure. I'm not really clear on who, who's going to provide that. I've been to um, so different people saying different things. You know, the title company can provide it with the help of the lender, but that obviously work itself out on August 1st because everything has to be done by then. Ultimately, though, I would say this, to, to, to be least affected by all these changes that always keep coming, is the bank doesn't really matter anymore, the company doesn't. Uh, it really is the person and the team behind them. Really, the days of a one-man loan officer is really kind of in the past because there is so much that has to get done. And... Uh, I have an incredible team, so we haven't worked together. I'd love to uh, do a transaction with you, apply for a position as a lender on your team. 
because we spend a lot of time up front. We have a 100 point checklist. We do a lot of things up front so that we try to make sure as much as possible, not only the deal closes, but that we don't have those issues right before closing, especially now where there could be a three day wait period uh, that would actually move the closing out. So with that, if you have any questions on this, I mean, some of these trade classes are almost an hour long. So um, don't hesitate to give me a call. This is just a quick video for you to kind of get a feel for some of the changes. And you can really reach me or by email or phone anytime. My contact information is below. With that, have a great day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.